Welcome everyone, I'm Maurice Gudemann, Corporate DCM at Hellebor Capital Markets. With me today on the program, my colleague uh, Ulrich Kirschner, Senior Analyst at Hellebor Research. You probably already know him as the author of our quarterly bulletins on the corporate Schuldschein and bond markets, and he's here to give us a preview on the latest edition on the Schuldschein. Hi Uli, and good to have you with us. Thank you, Morris, for the introduction. Happy to be here. Well, back in February, uh, with the latest video that we did, there was still a lot of uncertainty in the market. Uh, where, is it, where are we going? What are the developments that we need to take a account of? Uh, as you know, I don't need to tell you, COVID and lockdowns and all of the economic dislocations are still very much with us. However, there are positive signs. The new issuance uh, in the bond markets has been thriving, picking up from where it left off last year. A little more mixed on the Schuldschein side, but even there we see uh, a very positive uh, signal uh, in the strong uh, investor demand. So at the end of the quarter, we, we have finally a full data set to work with. In this uh, sense, uh, Oli, uh, for starters, how has the market performed? What, what, what did you notice uh, over the data for the first quarter? Yes, thank you, Morris, for your question. So in the first quarter, I think it's obvious that uh, the issuers still have taken a quite cautious stance um, including uh, some three issues where we don't know the final volumes yet. I think we will end up with 3.5 billion euros placed in the market in 18 transactions. That is obviously a little bit lower uh, than uh, in the last year, in the first quarter of ya last year. However, if you compare that with 2019 in the first three months, um, the issuance activity has been more or less on the same level. So for me, that is or that says that the Schuldschein market had a solid start, but certainly there is some room for improvement. Well, what do you think, in your view, uh, are the reasons for issuers staying put or staying on the sidelines and not participating in full yet in the market? Well, I think two reason, uh, reasons more or less come to my mind. On the one hand, issuers have tried uh, to source quite a bit of funding during the corona crisis and have by now built up a decent liquidity cushion. So for some of them, the immediate refi refinancing need is quite low. And on the other hand, there is still some quite strong competition uh, from the corporate bond market. Why is this? The ECB and especially uh, the purchasing programs of the ECB have uh, um, provided a market with very, very low, uh, very uh, beneficial refinancing costs. So especially uh, big corporates with a good market access in the corporate bond marks have the opportunity to choose between um, refinancing tools in an opportunistic way so that they can uh, optimize their costs. And the truth is for some of these issuers, refinancing in the corporate bond mark is uh, cheaper than in the Schulzschein market right now. Against this backdrop, however, I think uh, that the results uh, in the Schuldschein market are even more solid uh, and it shows that for good credits uh, for companies with solid balance sheet, the Schuldschein market is still a very reliable source for refinancing. What, what would you say are some other positive uh, signals for a recovery or shall we hope for a resurgence in the Schuldschein market? Well, I think uh, one fact is, or that I find encouraging, is that um, among the 16 uh, transaction, uh, transactions that have been launched in the first quarter so far, six came from international issuers. International issuers have been, um, well, uh, quite cautious during the course of last year due uh, to the corona crisis. 
they um, placed only around about 20% of the market volume in uh, 2020. That has been the lowest level since uh, 2015. And if we look at the other years, um, the participation of international issuers have been a very important growth driver in that market segment. So I believe or I think the return of uh, international issuers is also a very good sign uh, for the market going forward. Well, that sounds particularly good to me because, as you know, my focus is on international. They've been a strong source of growth. And uh, come to think of it, what about that other group that is a source of growth, the first time issuers? Uh, what do you see there? Well, first time issuers have been also a very important a driver of growth in, in the Schulzheim market, no doubt about it. And actually, we see uh, the same thing as with uh, international issuers there. They have been quite cautious in 2020. Um, the number of first time or debut issuers has been is very low. It hasn't been that low in the last 10 years. Um, so um, very, very cautious stance here. But we have seen also a turnaround uh, with uh, new issuers in, at the beginning of this year. Um, from the 16 issues in uh, Q1 that have been launched in this quarter I just mentioned before, Half of them uh, came from um, international issuers. So that is also a, a very encouraging sign here. All right, well, to round off, uh, what do you see as other major trends in the market? What, do we sh what should we be looking out for? Well, as in many areas, uh, the topic of sustainability or ESG is getting much more important in the Schulzheim market as well especially the so-called so uh, sustainability linked Schulzheim uh, are getting more popular uh, every time. So what I, do I mean by sustainability linked? In contrast to green Schulzheim, the use of proceeds is not predetermined. Rather, the margins on the Schulzheim are linked to a sustainability rating or to some uh, key performance indicators that have to be met. Um, the margin step up or step down in that case this is normally two to five basis points. And this type of in, uh, um, refinancing is quite uh, um, popular among a broader range of uh, um, sectors because of the increased flexibilities for the use of proceeds. So um, that shows already in the first quarter of 2021. Uh, from the total place volume, more than a third was placed with sustainability linked Schulzheim. So it shows, uh, or this is a clear indication, that when it comes to refinancing, financing, um, this type of uh, instrument is getting more and more important for corporates. And we as Helaba Research are uh, very happy to support uh, our clients in all of this question and um, give uh, counsel with our sustainability, uh, sustainable finance advisory. Yes, that sounds uh, very important. And uh, allow me you know, just the last follow-up question, more of a statement, really. I think uh, in future, correct me if I'm wrong, um, it, it would be mostly green issues and the non-green or non-ESG linked issues will be the rarity in the, in the market. Do you see that coming? Well, absolutely. I think uh, that green or let's say rather ESG linked, that is really the future. All right, uh, this seems like a good uh, point to, to wrap it up for today. Uh, Uli will be back at the end of Q2 with another such uh, overview. And uh, obviously, in the meantime, uh, check out our other videos uh, on, on this channel. If the description, uh, in the description, you can find links to some of the subjects uh, uh, we discussed uh, today. Thank you again, Uli, for, for your time and for the very interesting presentation. Thank and, you. And uh, thanks to everyone for, for watching. Thank you.